What is up there, Workforce? Chris here with work to game and I wanted to talk about everything that you really unlock from level 1 to 15. Uh, so this is going to be part of a series of guides that we talk about just the general progression and things you should keep an eye out on. Maybe they're features that you're looking forward to trying, or maybe they're features that you're like, I can't believe that I don't have that unlocked yet. So hopefully this helps. Now the first one is as soon as you complete a level 1 class quest, doesn't matter which class, you're going to get access to your hunting log. Now that's going to stay uh, right down here in your logs, okay? And so down in logs, remember my UI may look a little different than yours. Uh, there's what's called the hunting log. On keyboard and mouse, this is default bound to H, I believe. Uh, and so you can see that I have different classes here. And what this is, is it's a great source of alternative experience. And so you can see that, you know, I haven't gone back and completed this because I didn't need the experience, but there is an achievement behind completing these. I have nine of 10 on warrior, and then I leveled all the way through. I leveled my warrior entirely through dungeons. So I should go back at some point and get 10 you know as soon as I finish that one I can work on the 0 of 10 and then that one 0 of 10 0 of 10 and so on and then eventually you can have them kind of like my black mage here that is totally done now at level 5 you are going to have access to a district like what I'm in now and so if you go do like the where the heart is uh, for the mist quest or where the heart is the goblet uh, for goblet access you can go visit housing districts housing districts are where kind of your personal housing or your free company housing would live this is our free company house uh it's i believe it's a small plot so not a big deal for anybody that wants to visit ours out there's world visit we do a play on the aether data center and so you can go look on your place card and see where it is we are in the, the fifth ward of the mist on a small plot no, plot number 18 in case you want to see that and housing is a neat unlock system that gives you things like stables and gardens and airships and just a cool place to hang out easy access to a market board a cheap teleport awesome now you've made it to level 10 congratulations at level 10 you will actually have the ability to open up armory now the way i always get to my armory chest is i open this up and i just click on any piece of gear it opens it up uh, and then I'd be able to kind of jump around that way. But if you want to get there on its own, it is right here under the character tab and you go to armory um, and you may or may not have that bound depending on kind of if you use mine's bound to control I. Uh, and so you can open that up. And this is where all of your gear lives. It's basically a separate inventory. Each one is bound to only things in that slot. Uh, and you can actually, you know, this fills up shockingly quick. And so it's hard to kind of keep this empty. Uh, but as you click through these different tabs, that is where all your gear lives. And that is what, when you create gear sets, um, that is where it is pulling from. Uh, so the next thing you're gonna unlock at level 10 is leave quests. Uh, leave quests appear in your journal, just like any other quest. They actually look like a, um, a little exclamation point in like a square. I don't actually have any at the moment. Uh, there we go. And so a leave quest has one of these logos. And so without getting into too much detail, they basically are repeatable quests, kind of like dailies from other games. And they pull from these allowances, which cap out at a hundred. Um, they recover. You can see when the next round of leaves recover in your timers tab, uh, which is, I believe under logs, uh, duty timers and it's bound to control you for me and uh and so you can see here and it will tell you when like your next leave allowance is remaining uh and so you can see kind of when you'll be getting more of those the next thing is guild hests you get at level 10 um guild hests are actually like much easier versions of kind of dungeons for lack of a better term uh and so they actually cap out at 40 they never got done past that but you get a bonus experience for completing these the first time on every character and i believe first time on every class and so you may want to go through and kind of do these these are a great way if you do all these you'll know you've done them before if they have a check mark um if you do all these at least once that's kind of a great way of of seeing different mechanics and i've thought about kind of making guides just centered on these for the purpose of they're so simple that like they teach one mechanic and if you fail at that mechanic they don't really wipe you. They're very, very friendly content to get in there and get to know your role a little bit better. You're also going to have the duty roulette guild hests unlocked uh, around this time. And so that is right here. And that will give you bonus experience for queuing for a random. I say random because when you first unlock it, it's it's very, very like not random. But you can see that it does eventually pull from that whole list. Uh, and that's what that does. Uh, I believe Lavender Beds is not till level 10 instead of level 5, just in case you're looking for that housing district. At level 14, um, there is a Limza Lomenza quest called Good for What Ails You uh, that gives you a step dance emote. And then in Uldah, there's Help Me, Lord of the Dance. And then in Gridania, there's Saw That One Coming. And those are going to give you different emotes. Uh, emotes in this game, they're unlocked by quests with little plus signs, just like everything else. Um, but 
emotes in this game, I believe they are under the social tab. Uh, yes, so right up here, that is not bound for me. And then it tells you all these different emotes that you have, uh, and some of them are actually unlocked. And so some of them you have to go do various things and kind of, so you can see that I have the step dance, um, which we just talked about unlocking. And so I have this nice little step to me, and then I have this ball dance, uh, which is a little more ridiculous. And then I have the yole dance, um, which is, is a little bit of a, a chicken type dance. And then we talk about level 15. Level 15 is a ton of stuff to unlock. So this is gonna be where you have glamor. Yes, I am not a pig armor. Like this is glamor. I don't have my normal warrior gear on. I've actually swapped it out. And so that is what this little plus here means. That little plus tells me that I have um, glamor on that gets done through your glamor dresser. Uh, it should be done through a side quest called a self-improving, uh, man, or if I had a glamor, uh, side quest, and then you'll also have access to the golden saucer that unlocks in Ulda, and it's, it's from the, it could happen to you quest. And then that will give you access to things like the fashion report MGP. When we talked about the final fantasy 15 crossover event, that was heavily around, have you done enough in the golden saucer to have the MGP for that? And this is going to be where you start to talk about actual proper done. Dungeons. So if we open back up that dungeon pane, uh, you'll be going into actual ARR dungeons and you will notice that Sestasha unlocks at level 15. Now to get the roulette open, you need to have more than one to choose from. So you need to get a little bit higher so that you can get some of these others. But you see that we have dungeons at 16, 17, 20, and so on. Uh, and then you will also be unlocking your challenge quest, which will be done through a quest called Rising to the Challenge. Uh, and so I believe that comes after completing a, uh, a main story quest. And so you definitely want to kind of do that in your challenge log, which should be under logs. Um, you'll see there's a whole bunch of different logs here. And the challenge log is a weekly reset log that encourages you to do things from different categories and trade for rewards. Many of them grant experience. When they grant experience, they grant experience to whichever class you are on when you complete it. So for example, if I jump down to um, like the battles, I believe it is. It says complete three dungeons via the duty roulette, but it gives me zero experience because I'm on a level capped class. If I were to, however, jump to my pugilist who is only level 15, you'll see that it's gonna grant me a big chunk of experience. So it says complete three. If I do the first two duty roulettes of the week on my warrior and then switch to this guy for the third, this one will be the one I get all the experience. If I reverse that, I'll do them on my pugilist for the first two of the week, and then I switch to my warrior and run one, I will get the gill, but I will not get the actual experience. And you see the, the amount of gill doesn't change. So just be sure that you're paying attention to which class you complete these things on. And there's even a completion section for like just giving you gill for just doing more. Uh, for a while, I used to try to hit the 30 every week. That took a lot of effort and a lot of, of just kind of deciding what you were doing each day to get done. This is when you'll unlock as part of the glamour system, you'll unlock the ability to die gear. Uh, there is a, a side quest for that called color your world. Uh, and then the, uh, the aesthetician, um, to kind of do your like your haircuts and stuff. And that's a beauty is only scalp deep side quest. Uh, you'll also have the ability to at 15 start doing airship travel. Now I'm not talking about the airship in a house like ours. I'm talking about the airship from one city to another. And so that is when you're gonna have the ability to start jumping from whichever city you started in based on the class you, you picked uh, to jump to the different cities. And then you could go back and do their one to 15 quests or anything like that uh, and kind of see that. And you'll, you'll be at that point, you'll be starting to kind of see more of the world. Um, and the, the world starts to feel a lot bigger instead of kind of your version. I watched somebody play for the first time the other day and they started in a different city than me, looked totally different. I did not recognize what they were doing at all. Now, because we've started moving into group content, you will at level 15 unlock the party finder system. Now the party finder system is an extension of the duty finder system and allows you to manually find individual people. Uh, and so if we go into player search, uh, you will see that there's you know, excuse me, if we go into party finder, uh, under party, uh, you'll see that we have this whole party finder screen and this allows you to search by different categories, different worlds, data centers, and you're looking for select groups that are maybe doing something that's not typical duty finder. Duty finder is like, hey, we're all doing something, no need to explain, we're all going into our roulette for the week and everybody knows what to do. There's very little talking required. Party finder is like, hey, I wanna go run this specific type of content or I want to follow a specific set of loot rules or I want to go have a specific goal like heaven on high here. I wanna level in heaven on high just doing 21 to 30 over and over. And so then I can go join a group that has that objective. It's really common for like progression or anything like that. 
Um, you will also have the ability to pick up a couple of minions. This may be your first chance at minions. Minions are basically a, a pet that kind of, I have this Tonberry here. And so if you go into your minion guide, under your character, you have just pages and pages of minions eventually. Uh, and you'll have the ability to get your Coral Kitten, uh, which is right here. So if I summon that out, bye-bye, Tonberry. Uh, and so the Coral kin uh, Kitten comes out, and you'll have the that comes from a quest. If you want to Google this, Gamer Escape is your friend. That is a resource you need to be using. Gamer Escape is by far one of the most comprehensive websites when you're stuck on a quest. Uh, and it's called Curiosity Killed the Coral. Uh, it should be easy enough to remember. And then you also get a chance at a Wolf Pup. And so if we summon up our wolf pup here, uh, the wolf pup comes from a man's best friend is the name of the quest. And you get this adorable little wolf pup. And then the last thing here is the Hall of the Novice. Now the Hall of the Novice is, it's done from a quest called It's Probably Pirates. Um, and it's done at the Adventurer's Guild in each city. And so I'll go ahead and hop to Gridania, that's fine. Uh, but in Ulda, you, I mean, you know where the Adventurer's Guild is if you started in a city, because that's the city that obviously you're going to have been to that Adventurer's Guild as part of your early MSQ quest. So I doubt you made it to level 15 without experiencing your Adventurer's Guild. There is one in every city. It is a really great place to pick up early leaves and things like that. Um, and so, uh, you should know where that is. The Hall of the Novice basically breaks down different sets of quests, uh, quests that, and it actually gives you an item that, that helps you level faster, and it just helps you learn your role. And so if we're here in Gridania, um, I can jump down and I'm turned around. Yeah, this is right. And so we'll run down to the Adventurer's Guild in uh, Gridania, which is right over here. Uh, it's basically where your airship landing is, um, kind of. So if, if you're in Gridania and you're looking for that, um, the airship is over that way, and then it has this little leaf logo. This leaf logo you may recognize because it's next to you and you're in chat. That is for a new player or character. Um, there's one with a little flower on it. That's a returner. That means that they haven't played, and I believe it's 45 days or more. Uh, and so if I go to Hall of the Novice here, then they're going to offer me, like, they're going to have some things to explain what mentors are and all that, and then I can register for Hall of the Novice training. Uh, and then they're even willing to explain to me kind of how this is preparing you for party content and kind of if you would like to dive into that. I think this is really important, especially if you're new to MMOs or if you're new to a particular role like D uh, DPS, tank, or healing. Um, that's a really great tool to kind of have the game run you through some form of a tutorial early on. Like I said, there's loot tied behind it that you want to go ahead and grab at level 15 if you're new to the game. So I hope that this helps. This is levels 1 to 15. I'll be putting out another one of these, um, moving, starting, picking up at 16, and then moving onward. And uh, so let me know in the comments down below kind of any questions you have about 1 to 15 content and anywhere you're getting stuck. This is a very welcoming community, but it's a lot of information to take in. So absolutely have a fantastic day. My name is Chris with work to game and I will see you next time. Have you ever wondered what's on the other side of the camera from a YouTuber? Because sometimes it's really bad. Like right now my house is under renovation. And so just to show you, there's like a desk with stuff that doesn't have a home. And then there's other stuff that doesn't have a home. And then there's a few things that do have a home. And some days this is 100% clean around me. And other days there is literally a mess as close as right here, just out of frame.